This video teaches new players how to pick a suitable site for their first embarks. Select Start Playing in the main menu and pick Fortress Mode to embark in one of your generated worlds. After a world is loaded, you will see the calendar indicating the world's history advancing by 14 days. Note that dwarves have their own names for the months. You can read up on the Dwarven calendar in the wiki if you like. This is the screen where you choose the location for your fortress. It shows the world map in three different zoom levels. The world map, the region map and the local map. The yellow X in the world map or region map shows the location displayed in the next higher zoom level. You can move the X with the arrow keys on the region level and with shift arrow keys on the world map level. In the local map you see the position of your embark area and on the right you see the following information about it. The region's name, the biome's properties, names of the local brooks or rivers, and the list of soil and stone layers in this biome. Notice that the name of the brook has been abbreviated. If a string is longer than the text field it should fit into, the game tries to shorten it. It first drops the vowels, then sonorants, fricatives and stops. Down here we see the name of the world, the name of the landmass or the water body under the cursor, and information about the user interface. The keys highlighted in red control features provided by DFHack, while the green ones control the game's native features. DFHack's mouse controls allow you to move and resize the embark location by dragging it or its edges with the mouse. You can do the same by using the game's normal controls U, M, K, H, with or without shift. If the embark area contains more than one biome, you see a hint that you can use the function keys to switch between them. The biome gets highlighted in the local map and the details will update accordingly. We see that this part of the embark area is a mountain biome with no trees and this area is a heavily forested temperate freshwater swamp with a different soil and stone layer structure. The tabulator key cycles through different map view modes. Biomes is the current view. In neighboring civilizations view, we see that our neighbors are dwarves, goblins and elves. While we can expect trade relations with dwarves and elves, the red line next to goblins indicates that our civilization is at war with them. The next view allows us to pick our dwarven civilization. We do this by using plus, minus, star or slash on the numpad. The world map will update to show the currently highlighted civilization. The relative elevation view gives you an idea about the terrain altitude. Unsurprising for a mountain biome, this embark location is, for the most part, very high above sea level. The cliff indicator view shows how steep the terrain is. Here we would be embarking on a mountain slope, which cannot be recommended for beginning players. What are some easy embark locations, you ask? Let's first look at what are the difficult ones, so you know what to avoid in the beginning. This one, for example, combines several challenges. Probably the most apparent one is the terrifying surroundings. This poses a difficulty even for seasoned veterans. Freakishly terrifying things happen there. The other challenges which are not easy to handle are the absence of trees and the presence of the water-bearing stone layer called aquifer. This location is an example of extreme temperatures. Freezing cold or scorching hot biomes should also be avoided at the beginning. Hot or cold climates are acceptable, but expect that murky pools will occasionally dry out or freeze respectively, 
leaving the dwarves with no easily accessible water source. A less apparent challenge with this location is the proximity to the enemies. It is close to a goblin fortress, represented by the capital Pi, goblin pits, represented by the ordinal indicator, and a necromancer tower, represented by the capital I. Although the tower doesn't have a red line in the neighbors list, you shouldn't be expecting anything good coming from it. Another thing that makes some locations inconvenient for beginners is a terrain with medium or high cliffs, which makes the embark map difficult to monitor in the game. Now for the locations you should be looking for. They look something like this. Their area is almost flat. Their gentle slopes will be easy to monitor in the game. They keep a respectable distance from the enemies, although this will not stop them from attacking later in the game. They have temperate or warm climate, woodland or at least some trees, no aquifer and calm surroundings or wilderness. Untamed wilds are slightly more dangerous, but can sometimes serve as a valuable supply of food, leather or tameable animals. When you get the impression that every suitable location is spoiled by an aquifer, you can use the location finder. Look for a location without an aquifer in medium temperature range. The search doesn't take too long. The green axes in the region map and world map are the search matches. When you browse a region marked by such a green X, you can expect to find at least one spot on the local map matching your search criteria. Frankly, you don't need to spend too much time looking for a good location when learning Dwarf Fortress. Even if a spot is either cold, hot or slightly cliffy, it will serve you well enough to understand the basic principles of the game. After all, as a beginner, you are not expected to survive the first winter, let alone to build a thriving and long-lasting fortress on your first try. Once you have chosen a spot for a Dwarven civilization, press E to prepare for the embark.